correspondence. Essex Windsor Solid Waste Authority, Essex Windsor Residential Waste Diversion, 2013. Moved by Councilor Baker, supported by Councilor Bondi. Any questions? Councilor Baker? Just a quick comment. Um, I just want to make a comment on that. Uh, the good work that was done with this diversion, given the fact that the market values were down, they were still able to keep the revenues uh, pretty close to equal to last year. So I think that's a, a good achievement. And I think we need to reach more of our targets to, uh, for, for waste diversion. But I think they've done a good job uh, keeping us online. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Anything further? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. B, the Corporation of the County of Essex Resolution, Municipal and Waste Authority Renewal Energy Products Projects. <clears throat> Councillor Bondi moves, supported by Councillor Scott. With comment, Councillor Bondi. Thank you. In uh, talking to our deputy mayor before we came in, uh, we, we both sit on the landfill liaison committee, and I was just wondering if there's something in addition the town of Essex would like to do to support this in some way, maybe not only receive and support this letter, but send our own, because we are the host municipality, and uh, I think it's uh, definitely an, an, an initiative that I would like to see uh, come to fruition. So I don't know if, if that's a possibility. Maybe, uh, maybe Mr. Malosh has more insight on this. But it's definitely a pipe dream of ours. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Malash. For you, Your Worship, uh, I don't have any more insight than what Councillor Bondi has, but just the fact that uh, I know it's been an issue with the Landfill Liaison Committee for a number of years, uh, for as long as we've had suggestions of even having wind turbines in the in the neighborhoods and uh, I too believe that uh, as the host community maybe we should be a little more uh, forceful with this and and put our opinion forward as well uh, you know if they see enough letters come across their desks suggesting the same uh, type of change to their policy so that we can have the landfill uh, a proper site to be able to host uh, renewable energy with the gases that they're emitting rather than burning them uh, perhaps who knows perhaps uh, we could make the difference in in that becoming reality so uh, if Councillor Bondi want to put forward a motion to that effect that we put forward a letter strike up a letter okay Councillor Baker yeah, thank you, through your worship. Um, again, yes, I support that with um, some documentation and support from from our council, and that maybe we can request further some detail um, from the landfill authority because I know they've been going through this for over seven years now in terms of trying to get the methane gas, and they're burning off good resources that we could be using. So I think if we could, uh, Mr. Aotis, if we can get some detail attached as appendix to our to our uh, letters that we go out so it shows that we're really s strongly in support of this that we're, we're doing our homework and that we need to really move forward so a good issue right now with the current election going on we need it, it to be present uh, uh, as an election item as well because that's important stuff they're not moving fast enough on the on this part of the uh, renewable energy so I support that recommendation to All in favor? Motion carries. You said it well. <laughs> All right, I move that uh, uh, the town of Essex um, um, support a letter or provide a letter in support with background documentation for over the last seven years of the work and efforts that have been uh, asked for in terms of um, requiring the methane gas for renewable energy. Something to that effect. Thanks. Okay. Ordered by Councillor Bondi. Any questions to the motion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. C, Committee of Adjustment Meeting Agenda for May the 20th, 2014. Moved by Councillor Baker, supported by Councillor Scott. Any questions? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries. D, Windsor Essex County Environment Committee, March 6, 2014, meeting, meeting minutes, report number 82. Moved by Councillor 
Councillor Bondi, supported by Councillor Bowman. And with question, Councillor Bondi. Thank you. I believe administration sent out an email last week that the meeting on regional transit was canceled. I just wanted to know if that meeting was rescheduled. And I really think it's, uh, it's a priority right now that Essex be engaged with the regional transit, the possible regional transit system, because if we are going to go after the, uh, the mega hospital, this is going to be a key puzzle piece of it. So I don't, has the meeting been rescheduled or why do we have a reason why it was postponed it, or does it have anything to do with the provincial election? I think it had to do with uh, some of the bylaws that the city of Windsor has incorporated that weren't followed with regards to publicizing it and things like that. And it hasn't been rescheduled yet. But we've advised them that we'd like it sooner than later. So. Councilor Baker. And just a follow-up comment. Um, I believe yourself and uh, uh, Donna Hunter are the representatives on that committee when it comes forward, so. Right. Yeah, we'll be there. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. E, ELK Energy Inc. and ELK Solutions Incorporated annual resolutions, acknowledgments, and financial statements. Moved by Councillor Bowman, supported by Councillor Scott. Questions? Councillor Baker. Quick question. Um, maybe we could ask, because um, we don't sit on Elk Solutions, but they're in their audit report. They talk about the gross margins on service revenue is um, grown significantly from 34000 to 177000 Maybe we can get some reasoning on that um, and their income before taxes has also increased substantially, So, which is good news, but I'm just wondering where that's come from. Councilor Bowman? Who sits in that? Yeah, basically it's it's the fact that the Elk Solutions had a lot more contracts last year. It, it varies from year to year. So uh, product purchased to, for installation and or construction um, it affects those numbers tremendously. So it's sort of money in, money out. But if there's a lot of work going on, um, we can't, well, the, the workers come from Elk Energy, and it's just the Elk Solution portion of it that translate that. So from year to year, there's huge fluctuations depending on the amount of work that was contracted out. And uh, the plus is the government liked us very much because there was lots of taxes paid this year. But uh, uh, the uh, Elk Solution is on very sound uh, footing, so it's a good place to be. Thank you, sir. Anything further? Councilor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question. I think Donna Hunter might be best uh, to answer this. When the long-term customer deposits are returned, do those customers receive interest on them? I had two questions. <coughs> Through you, Your Worship, yes, they do. I'm not sure of the percentage interest, but they do receive interest. Okay. And Oops. And question. It looks like the, uh, the director's wage go up almost 20% from 2012 to 2013 or am I reading something wrong and there are you familiar with that okay sorry <laughs> I uh, they did go up but not by 20% so I'll have to ask them what the that difference okay is. there was two parts in the report and they didn't uh, they didn't make sense to me. Like, I saw that in 2012 it was 2,096, and then in 2013 it was 2,535. But then I saw somewhere else that the the total uh, wages for the directors was 24,000 pretty much each year. So I just didn't know which number I was going to look at. So thank you, Councillor Baker. Sorry. Yeah, just a clarity. So through your worship, just for Donna, the interest that's paid is two percent below prime. That was in the report. <laughs> so had, obviously, I had nothing to do on the weekend. <laughs> Anything further? No. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Uh, F, Essex County Steam and Gas Engine Museum President Evelyn Baker, civic address change.
Chairman Lash. Um, I'll move receipt for now for discussion yep. purposes. Okay. Report, Councilor Baker, Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you. So um, we have a contingency here tonight that we may want to uh, find out what they like to say um, after we have a little discussion here. We'll talk sure. about that afterwards. But just to start off, um, Don, I'll start with. I guess I'll start with you. Just I, I'm not sure who to ask on this question here. Um, first of all, wondering a couple of questions. Wondering who. Uh, who was the, what department or what party, was it county councilor or town council that provoked a change in the address? That was one. So Chris is way of raising this. Oh, Cheryl, okay. So Cheryl. Sorry, Donna. We'll, ask, we'll talk to Cheryl about that. So that's one question. Who started the request for a change in the um, address? Uh, secondly, uh, the, the change was made without actually informing the gas and steam engine from what I understand, that their address was changing. Uh, they're looking for an answer on that, I'm sure. Thirdly, um, is there a way that we can have dual addresses on there? Even if, even if the officially the address is has been changed to 11081, um, you can see in the in the letter here that uh, all of their correspondence, all their letterheads, everything. Uh, that they'll probably use for the next up to five or six years uh, is already stamped with 11071B, which is the same address as Coan Park. Uh, there's two entrances into the park, and I think this was probably initiated probably to um, help out emergency vehicles get to the right location quicker. Um, so I guess I don't know if. I'll repeat the questions if you need, because I'm... Thank you. Cheryl? Through Your Worship, first of all, this request came to Council a month or so ago through minutes from the Cohen Park Board. They had requested this change. Um, the, what was your next question? I, I can't remember. Uh, they, uh, the Cohen, uh, the, 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 the steam and gas engine um, did not know the change was happening. Is there a normal protocol that we go through when we're changing somebody's address? Through Your Worship, I was in contact with our building department and since they are the ones who do the street address changes. They didn't know them. It was an oversight. Um, they, they said that, you know, it was something that they didn't do. Usually we, the, an ownership, uh, uh, sorry, a street number change comes from the owner of the property and that's why they weren't used to sending out a letter letting them know but they they did apologize and we will take care of that in the future and the other question of, of um, why we can't have a and b emergency services has asked that there be no duplication it's too um, confusing for them if they have 11 a and b they would like each property to have their own address okay, thank you and then the, uh, the last question would be would it be okay for them to continue with their address as 11071B as they have on their correspondence? They have a post office box right now that they have their mail sent to. But as far as could they have another sign up there that said 11071B? And you may not have that answer right now. If you don't, then um, I'm asking that question and we can get back to me at a later point in time. Mr. Phillip. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Um, I think that's something that we can certainly take to the management group we meet tomorrow. Uh, that'll be a point that we raise and discuss. I think uh, appreciating that they've endured a bit of hardship already by, by the fact that their uh, envelopes and uh, stationery and all of those other things have already been marked up accordingly, uh, we'll try to do our best in, in allowing that to occur. Perhaps if it's the 11071B on their signage and not looking like the emergency signage that is out in front of every residence. As far as their mail goes, it goes to a post office box, as you've indicated, Councillor. So I, th I believe that that should take care of that side of it. But it's the confusion for our emergency services staff was in attending a fire or an emergent situation. It's what are, they're looking strictly at the at the uh, carded address in the in the right of way. So if that was 
if their 11071B was somewhere else not there, I think that that's uh, an appropriate. So we could work on that. We can discuss that and get back to them or through you, your, uh, through you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Baker. Yeah, thank you, through your worship. So I guess just a general question. I mean, I can understand that because the mail, uh, this is strictly an emergency services. This is emergency services, and that's what these green signs are for. So I don't, does, will this interrupt people from knowing where they're at? I mean, if they still have their letterhead that says, that says 1107, uh, 717 on all their letterhead, will people still be able to know where they're located? I think that's the big issue because they have, they pick up their mail from the post office. Um, the issue is this number now that's displayed on their property is going to say 11081, uh, apparently, correct? Right. So does that deter from people finding the location? I think that's the whole issue in itself. Your mail is still going to, still going to, you're going to pick up your mail, people are still going to send it to that post office address because the mail is different than directional. Um, so are we just, I guess maybe if, uh, if we could hear from, uh, they're here, if I get a motion to hear from them, if that's the real issue, is it location or is it the mail? Because if it's the mail, I think they're fine. But if it's location, what can we do? Um, will people still be able to find them is the big question. And that was going to be my intention as soon as we quit discussing, Councillor. That's going to allow someone to make the motion that the delegation speak to it. So, anything further, Council? Okay, we'll have someone to make that motion. Councillor Baker, supported by Councillor Bowman. Any questions to the motion? All in favor? Motion granted. Uh, who do we have that wants to be the speaker? Come on right up and get on the mic so we can all hear you and uh, I guess we can give you five minutes. Any one of those, if they're turned on. Underneath, Maury. It's not on? Oh, it is. We just need your name. We know some of us. So. I'm Elvin Baker, president of the Essex County Steam and Gas Club. And uh, I'm really upset that we were never notified about this. Like, had we talked about it, we probably wouldn't even be here tonight. Why was it done? Well, I don't know if you could hear our clerk when she spoke about the issue, but she did say there was an oversight. Mm -hmm. And, you know... They did apologize, our staff. Like apologized. nobody notified this was happening. All of a sudden, someone said to me, what happened to our B on our sign? We started looking. It isn't even our number. It's 11081 now. Like, why didn't somebody let us know they wanted to do this? Why weren't we let know that this was happening? Is my big thing. All our stationery, our books have gone to press. We've all got this emergency sign. And we never did have a sign until we were broke into last Thanksgiving. That was our first sign, emergency sign, when we got broke into last Thanksgiving. And the police came to write up the report, and she said, where's your sign? We've always used call and sign. Why all of a sudden we need a sign and now we need another sign? Why? Okay. Mr. Phillips. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship. My understanding uh, uh, to Ms. Baker is that the emergency services to that location in terms of being able to locate it. It's such a large piece of property and at one point in time, and I, I believe it's still the case, is that it is one parcel mm -hmm. between Coan Park and the, and the steam. It belongs to the town of Essex. It, 
in title it does but when it comes there's a number of locations that are like that but in terms of emergency services being able to go to a singular address and that's what those signs are out there for mm -hmm. they're they're effectively put in place so emergency vehicles I know we tell our neighbors and our friends that's where you can find us as well and in your case you're telling your customer that that's where you're going to be able to find us and we appreciate that it was an unfortunate oversight that we did not advise you earlier we should have and we're taking actions to correct that such that that doesn't occur in the future unfortunately we can't turn back the clock on this one the, the difficulty though from and I had this discussion with our fire chief is that they need that independence they can't look for the same number with an with an, a pre or a suffix behind it they can't look for an 11 it's 1171 versus 11081 or the A or B uh, it's a large enough property spread out that we want to be able to ensure that the OPP and our fire service and emergency services can get to those addresses as quickly as possible without hunting for them, particularly in the night. And as you've indicated, you've already had a situation that occurred there. I don't believe that this affects in terms of your advertising. You can still advertise it as you always have. We don't use that number. Well, then it, all it is is to direct that, that particular number for my purposes is strictly to get it's emergency It's emergency service. number. That's yeah. what that number is. Yeah. That's, yeah. That number has nothing to do yeah. with Cohen Park. Okay. That's just a number that says this is this and this is that. That has nothing to do with our address. Most correct. But we have this on all our new stationery that we just had done like over a thousand dollars worth of receipt books and now we got a wrong number on it. I think I've heard around from two or three people you don't have to change that. Your mail, if I send you something tomorrow, you're going to get it. I'm going to put 11071 R3 Gesto, whatever and you're going to get that. It ain't going to come office. if you say guest on it. Oh, sorry, I'll go right here. You know, you're going to get that. Okay. You're going to get that at the post office. It has nothing no. to do with your mail. You can use the same address. Anybody that drives down there is going to say, oh no, that's Coan Park. There is a steaming gas. You know, if they don't know where you are. Everybody calls us Coan Park too. Because well, we're all in the do. same thing. And that's fine. But it sounded like in we're the neighbors. report, the report that we just heard, it started, there was a request from the Coan Park Board to do something about the same address. They needed to. So that's where it started from, is what I just heard here this evening. You know, and then they expanded to the town getting involved. And like it's been stated here a couple of times, we erred by not consulting with you people. But I would also have thought that Coan Park, your neighbor, you know, I know like, yeah. why wouldn't they have said something to you people also? Well, so. we asked Joanne and, and um, okay. what's her name? Yeah. Tina. When we had the police there, when we got broke into at, Labor Day, or at uh, Thanksgiving, like, if we have to put this same number, like the officer said to us, we should have our own number because we had no number. We've never had a number until last Thanksgiving. And Tina and, and uh, Joanne were, still, were both there and they agreed to A and B and the town came out, put the sign up the next day and then all of a sudden now we get this stupid new number like why all of a sudden why didn't they do it back then I think because we now we have heard from the fire department the police department EMS and it doesn't work that way uh, Deputy Mayor Malash had his hand up I'll let him have his comments Richard I I just uh, want to comment that it, it wasn't something officially that the Coan Park Committee asked for like at a board meeting or anything like that um, it was there was talk about uh, our 911 emergency number that we we're going to post it on all of the baseball diamonds and that kind of thing and I do remember in general there was discussion of um, of uh, how would they know whether which entrance they should come in but there was nothing ever officially 
said at the Coan Park meeting saying that we want them to have a different address or anything like that. So I don't know where it came up uh, uh, from Coan Park, to be honest with you. It was nothing at the board level that I can recall. So unless unless Joanne called or Tina called, uh, was it something in, in minutes that Okay, I don't I don't maybe I wasn't at that meeting then. Through your worship. Yes, it came as minutes and It came through their board minutes and council had asked us to look into to doing this. Did we ask that it actually be done, or did, did the board ask, could it be done? And I don't know if the board knew that it was actually being done. I'll, I have to research the minutes and from a, a prior council meeting to find out where the motion came from, but I can get that to you. Councilor Baker. So thank you, Your Worship. So, Mr. Baker, no relation, by the way, right? <laughs> uh, oh. Um, uh, so does this affect people finding your location is the big question. Because we know you know your documents are okay, your mail and everything, you're going to pick up your mail. Does this affect people finding where you're at? Well, I'm wondering that because all... Well, I'm But you have a big enough sign. You're close enough to. You're close enough to 11071, right? Which is that now? Is that Conan Park now? Yeah. Okay. So you're close enough to that. That would your signage not indicate that the gas and steam engine society is there? Because you're a separate building, obviously, right? I just. I'm hoping that you have enough identification. You don't know that we're a separate building from Conan. No, I said I do know that. I'm making I'm making the statement. I've been there several times. I'm making the statement that you are a separate building, and that would that not identify with the signage? You have signage there. That I can't. Again, my question is: Does this really affect anything but people finding your location? Can they still find it? That's what I'm worried about. Because it's 11.08.1 now. Yeah. You're going to be running up and down the road. And it sounds to me that this was all predicated because you did have a break-in. And then when they found out that you weren't identified as an emergency address, which is very important, that this predicated the fact that you needed an emergency address. Yes, we've never, ever had one since we yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate, the process, but like it's been stated, uh, we certainly, you know, I'm sure that doesn't happen again, but I think people will know your location, right? That's the key factor. It's our 30th anniversary, and I want to see every one of you people here tonight at our show on August 8, 9, and 10. Yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed. Okay. I Thank. know you'll be there. <laughs> Thank you. I ask you to shut your mic off before you leave. Oh, oh that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> we had a motion on the floor. All in favor? Motion carries. Uh, G, Cement Association of Canada proposed changes in the Ontario Building Code. And we did get an email as earlier this afternoon with regards to comments from the fire chief, and uh, we have a hard copy on the table here for you. Mr. Baker, uh, move receipt of the, uh, the um, correspondence, and then I have a question. Supported by Councillor Scott. Councillor Baker. Thank you. So uh, this is with regards to um, Fire Chief uh, Pilon's uh, submission. I couldn't make in this whether he is supporting or not supporting this this letter of this morning. I know he talked about the new building code. I, I couldn't understand what was the resolve. Is he not supporting the wood structures, or he is? Mr. Phillips. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship, uh, 
Certainly our fire chief and uh, the majority of our fire department, if not all, do not support this in that it, it's uh, wooden structures uh, with, with limited burn times. Uh, they much favor a, a full steel structure beyond that. Uh, this is a, it's apparently cost saving through the construction industry. I'm not an expert on it, but this is what we've read on it, is that there's an understanding that it's cost saving. However, there's the, from the fire safety perspective, they believe that there's a, uh, some jeopardy involved in this and that they would not favor it. Thank you. And so having heard that, then now I understand a little more clearly, I think that I'd like to change my motion to receipt and support. Because uh, I just recently watched a documentary on, on how combustible these buildings are just recently. Um, I'm not recently, but now with, with all the new materials and how quick they go up. And I, I can support this. I can see why there's an issue of danger in terms of the fire safety on that. So I would change my motion to receipt and support. You, sir? That's fine, John. Thank you. Any further questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carried. Uh, H, Ministry of Citizenship and Immigration, Ontario Medal for Good Citizenship. We have until July 17th to give a name, and I, I have a name that I have in my office of one citizen in the town of Essex, I know Essex Centre, I should say, that uh, I will be submitting his name, but we can put in as many names as we can, or we want to. I wouldn't leave it too long. We have till July 17th, so put the thing cap on, and I'm sure there's more than one in our municipality. Motion to Motion receive, Councilor Bowman, Bowman, and Councilor Baker. Question, then, so yes, sir. Thank you, through your worship. So does that mean the, the link that they've given us here would permit us to go in and submit names and application on our own, or is that going to be posted on the website for our citizens to do that as well? I'm not sure the process. Yep, this will be going on our web page. Yep, sure. Anything further? All in favor? Motion carries. Uh, Hi, the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, Council Award honoring outstanding Ontario physicians. Moved by Councillor Baker, supported by received and support. Councillor Bondi, any questions? Again, if you know someone, put his name in. Thank you very much. All in favor? Motion carries. J. Essex County Library Board, Tour of South Branches. Moved by the mayor, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? I just hope everyone has read this or will read it. I know in the municipality of Essex, we have three libraries on that tour, and uh, great remarks made by the head of the library board with regards to our three libraries. And uh, the chair sitting there, Mr. Deputy Mayor Malash, the library board. So. Congratulations on the job well done in our municipality. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. K Interior Provincial Police, OPP Essex County Detachment, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing Performance Measurements Program. That was for 2013. Councilor Baker. Move receipt with question. And supported by Councilor Scott. What question, Mr. Baker? Yeah, through your worship. Um, I'm not sure. What does cleared mean? They, they talk about the actual violent crimes. They talk about cleared and then the, the rate. What does cleared mean? Somebody on the police services board can help me. What was that? Councilor Bowen? I didn't hear. I think that means conviction or somebody's convicted of it. Clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we know that? 
sure that's what it is. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is also. So therefore, so therefore we had, in 2013, we had reported actual 99 violent crimes and 94 of them were convicted? That's what you're telling me? That's correct. Well, okay. Thank you. Then... So that's for sure. Then that's what that means. <coughs> but I'll get back to. Okay, thank you. I'll make it, get back to you. Or you can call Mr. Miller yourself. He, in, in his report, he said, "Any questions to the report? Just give him a buzz, and he would answer." Okay, thanks. Anything further? I'll favor the motion. Motion carries. Uh, L. Nature Columbus Francis J. Clark Council Number Fifty Three Fifty. Requesting permission to use town property for the annual chicken rib barbecue. Deputy Mayor Malash. Supported by Councilor Baker. Questions? I have one. Like, I know they've talked to the fire department and everything. I never noticed anything in the report with regards to police. Are the police okay with us shutting off, letting those people out on the Roadway. Mr. Sweet. Through your worship, just because of the timing, we do have a CERT, Special Events Resource Team meeting on June 4th. But this is part of the agenda item where police will be at that meeting for their comments. Okay. So we have this motion to approve it, and I'm all for this, just as long as the police are okay with it. Councilor Baker. Yeah, I, I, I like the concept. It's interesting because if we follow along the lines of Kingsville, Kingsville have uh, designated a couple of the areas for for cafes. Basically, what they've done is they've put a, a, a cement block area identical to this on the road, which allows people to walk around, and then they have the cafe um, outside on the sidewalk, on the park, on the sidewalk. So I think it's, it's, it's a very unique idea. I'd like to see how this works, and then maybe in the future, um, the coming season, we could look at a program in our downtown Harrow and also possibly in uh, Essex Center where there's a restaurant and looking at some cafe opportunities. Uh, so everybody has a chance to take a look in Kingsville. It's a great idea, and I think this could be an example. Let's see how it works. So, Like I say, I'm all for it. If the police say it's okay. Deputy Mayor Malash. Uh, I'll change that motion if uh, people are more comfortable to incorporate... Uh, in, in with um, approval from from the police department. Seconder was Contra Baker. Sorry, oh, that's what I should have said. The resource team. Okay, I'll favor that motion. Motion carries. Committee meeting minutes. Personnel committee April tenth, twenty fourteen. Councilor Baker? Okay. Supported by? With late amendments today that came in. Okay. Right on. Supported by? Councilor Bowman. Any questions? I'm in favor of that motion. Motion carries. Hold on, Jeff. Where are we at now? What's the next one, is it? Way over. There. Okay, Corporate Services Report 2014-06, Policy Manual, Policy Number 021, Video Surveillance. Mr. Baker, question. Uh, Through your worship, the motion that was just passed was for the uh, let's see, the minutes of the April 10th personnel committee meeting be received. In the following three resolutions, and they deal with the communications report, the 
policy number 23, which is use, corporate use of social media policy, and policy number 24, employee personal use of social media policy, as well as motion from the personnel committee meeting 2014-01-18, that corporate services report 2014-06 entitled video surveillance policy be received, and that the policy be adopted by council, and then the last motion from the personnel committee meeting was that corporate services report 2014-10 entitled travel and business expense policy be received and then the to the policy number 025 travel and business expense policy be adopted by council with the amendments so so i moved and supported and we voted on it correct that's correct and that has passed yes all policies those three yes the ones that we just mentioned Now we're at Corporate Services Report 2014-06, Policy Manual, Policy Number 021, Video Surveillance. No. So, I, if I can clarity again, we okay. just moved, seconded, and voted on the policies recommendation from the Personnel Committee, correct? Is the clerk, can you confirm that? So we're now moving on to finance. B. No. No? What are we moving on to? Okay, sorry, I'm confused yeah. again. Me too. So, so the personnel committee yeah. had a number of policy reports and recommendations, right. and we moved and seconded that, all those from the committee. And we voted on it. And you listed each one of them, the policies, correct? Mm -hmm. That was the motion. That's correct. And that was the so that and we who we voted on it. So we are at finance. Thank you. Sorry. We are at finance, right? Yeah. Okay. B. Finance Committee, May fifth, twenty fourteen. This has four resolutions to it. I move. Oh. Yep. Doesn't matter. Deputy Mayor Malash. I move the report with all of the resolutions. Okay. And Councilor Bondi. Support. Yep. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor of that motion? Motion carries. C. Heritage Committee, February 27, 2014. Councilor Bowman. Oh, supported by Councilor Baker. Any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Uh, bylaws. Bylaw number 1321 being a bylaw to enter an agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Essex, the recipient, and Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Ontario, as represented by the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, the Ministry, and Essex Police Service Board, the Board for the Community Policing Partnership CPP Program. Councilor Bowen moves. Supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions, Councilor Baker? I just noticed in the documentation uh, in both the bylaw and the report, it uh, still has some, um, correct me if I'm wrong, some old documentation that says to the, to the board and it has the chair as Deb Bennett. Oh, is that right? And that is still in, under Article 18, 18 1. It still has listed as Deb, uh, Chair Deb Bennett. So maybe we need to make that correction before we pass this bylaw. Change, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Be done. Anything further? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Bylaw number 1322. 
being a bilateral and an agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Essex, the recipient and Her Majesty Queen and the Right of Ontario, as represented by the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, the Ministry, and the Essex Police Services Board, the Board, for the Safer Community 1000 Officers Partnership Program. Move Councilor a, Baker moves. Move, move approval with those corrections again. With Councilor Bowman supporting. Any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Bylaw number 1323 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of May 20th, 2014, regular meeting of the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Essex. Councilor Baker moves. Supported by Councilor Bowman. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. February check register under financial. February 28, 2014. Moved by Contra Bowman, Deputy Mayor Malak supports. Questions? A, B, and C. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Malak. Fine. All in favor of that motion. Motion carries. Uh, A, B, C. New business. Your Worship, the first item is the letter from the Essex Fun Fest requesting that the town designate this as a significant municipal event. Dr. Bowman, I'll move it. It's a requirement for our festival each year, and uh, uh, hopefully, you keep that weekend of July the 11th open to uh, be involved. So, it's this year will be a little bit different and a lot better. Big change that year. That's correct. Yep. Supported by Councillor Bondi. Any questions? Still looking for volunteers also, I imagine, Councillor oh. Bowman. Always. So if you, you know, you just want to walk around and say hello to people, I'm sure Morley will accept you. So get on board. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. The second item is Infrastructure and Development Report 2014-10, and this is the Harold Colchester South Water Treatment Plant Reservoir Rehabilitation. Councilor Baker. Move support of the report yep. and recommendations. And supported by Councilor Bowman. Any questions? All in favor of that motion. Motion carries. Uh, that was it. New business. There's a notice of motion moved by Deputy Mayor Malash uh, that administ administration prepare a report outlining the rules of federally sponsored legal marijuana grow ops under the old rule. Uh, Deputy Mayor Malash, I speak to this. Sir. Thank you, through your worship. Um, the intent is uh, twofold. Uh, I've been dealing with our planning department on uh, this topic for the last few months, and um, I think it's important that all of council is aware of what's um, what's out there as far as um, how prepared our our uh, planning department is to handle any new operations, um, uh, legally sponsored uh, marijuana grow ops by the federal government uh, moving forward and also perhaps um, outlining the differences so all of council uh, and fellow administrators are aware of the what's what are the rules with the old administrative uh, rules versus the new administration of um, these grow operations um, also to uh, let residents know that we're we as a town and are being um, proactive in the sense of um, trying to make sure that these operations are are following the rules that they're supposed to follow and that the town of Essex has an action plan is to uh, to try and make sure that these are located in areas where they should be and and so on um, so I'm asking that administration uh, prepare a report that uh, outlines the old rule regime uh, versus the new rule regime um, 
and it could be in chart form just as simple as that but uh, based on what planning department believes are the changes from old regime to new regime and uh, and in that way too we'd have a we'd have something that's available to residents if they're asking what's the difference what am I going to see in a different uh, you know if this if we do happen to have an old operation uh, under the old rules uh, and we and we do have a couple of them within our community um, some of the residents may wonder what's going to be different about this operation um, if we had it in a chart form this is what it used to be now this is what they're going to be have to have to live with as an operation going forward it's something that we can hand out to the residents that are concerned uh, to let them know exactly what the changes are going to be um, very loose rules as under the old regime and I'm sure the federal government's recognized that and hence the reason for moving forward to a new set of rules um, but also uh, to let our council know and to let our residents know that we are fully prepared and planning uh, is aware of what needs to happen in order to make sure that uh, any new operations or existing operations that are changing from the old rules to the new rules um, have regulations set out by the town of Essex that says this is what you need to do and that we're fully aware of what has to happen and we're there to guide them and make sure that these operations uh, abide by the rules so that's my motion thank you if I can get a seconder by Councillor Baker with a question yep. uh, just a comment too and uh, it's, it's good to, for us to address this um, I'm a little bit familiar with this sector um, what we knew also need to focus on too moving forward is that um, under the new regulations which came into effect April 1st of this year but however there is a, an appeal with the with that is out there we need to know what zoning is zoning is going to be the most important how this will be uh, zoned in our municipality should a new licensed operator that's what they're called licensed operator licensed producer approved by the federal government sh under license under um, uh, under um, Health Canada if they are approved what do we agree to as zoning because in some other municipalities they're in agriculture areas where they don't require any change in zoning because they're there if we have new operations and this is what most municipalities are dealing with right now what are the rezoning what zoning will they fall under that's that's a question that's all over the place right now so I think that's a very important one the zoning then will also take care of the fact where they could be placed and we have some restrictions on zoning which would be obviously not next to schools things of that nature I would hope to see in this report so um, I, I would support that and uh, it's going to be I look forward to seeing the report you, sir anything further I'm in favor of the motion the motion carries uh, adjournment Councillor Baker Councillor Bondi any questions all in favor motion carries Thank you very much. Have a great evening, everyone.